Do not attempt to copy anything you see me doing within this video. Do not handle wildlife, especially a black widow spider. If you choose to do so, I'm not liable for anything that happens to you. Well, it's not every day I put my hand in a jar full of black widows, is it? How y'all doing? I'm Chris Ignato, and today I'm going to be releasing, well, a little over a hundred black widows in their mother's honeymoon suite. If you're wondering why I happen to have a black widow, the answer is simple. Over the last several weeks, I've done several, you know, public events teaching about nature, wildlife, and I had two arthropod events at, you know, two different parks. And I really wanted some kind of ambassador that would, well, catch the public's attention and reel them in for my opportunity to teach because that is my passion. I'm sure you know that by now. Of course, for me, it was a no-brainer. I knew hands down that Black Widow would be perfect for drawing the attention of the public and bringing them in for my opportunity to teach about them and all sorts of other invertebrates. You know, let people know that these aren't the evil monsters that some people think they are. And... You know, people's fear and fascination also opens up their interest. It gives you an opportunity to educate. Over the last several weeks, using this spider for educating the public and basically entertaining them has proven to be extremely valuable. Not only have people learned about the beauty and mild-mannered behavior of black widows, a lot of people learned that black widow spiders are actually very important and crucial members of the ecosystem. You know, keep in mind that some of the predators will spot that aposomatic coloration and think twice before eating them. Well, the mortality rates of black widows is still very high, and some of the smaller pockets of the ecosystem, some of the other spider species might be completely consumed and eradicated due to that predation, whereas the black widows in some of those areas are left alone and help keep some of the other insects in check. Insects such as some of the cockroaches, the flies, June bugs like this big. Anywhere I find black widows, I find June bugs this big. They seem to go hand in hand. So uh, yeah, these black widows, just like everything else out here, is very important. It's all about checks and balances. Without those checks and balances, the entire natural world would completely collapse. I don't know where you live, but in some areas you can actually see that in action. You know, places where the frogs have died off due to pollution and things like that. You have a lot more mosquitoes and flies going about. Of course, the white-nosed fungus from the little brown bats and stuff really dropped those populations. And, of course, in response, the mosquito population skyrocketed for a few years. That's all checks and balances. Now, unfortunately, I knew that finding an adult black widow this time of year would most likely guarantee that she would have been fertilized and therefore gravid with eggs. Sure enough, that's exactly the case, but the timing couldn't have been more perfect because it wasn't until the final evening of the second arthropod festival that she actually created the egg case and got more protective and just stayed, you know, with the egg case the entire time. And I thought that it might actually be a little bit better for their survival if I you know, kept them, documented them, and all that good stuff, and then released them once they hatched. That brings us to today. I'm going to release them right now. This habitat is a little bit farther away from where humans go exploring. The only people that will be in this spot are other nature enthusiasts that already know a thing or two about dangerous wildlife. You know, it's not only black widows you have to worry about here, there's velvet ants, Every once in a while, there's a timber rattlesnake and, you know, all those kinds of things. The general public will not be in this location. So I'm not putting anybody at risk or in danger by releasing them where they would have been anyways, because as I said, this is where I found their mother. But what you might not like, however, is the fact that I'm going to be releasing these babies by hand. I'm going to reach into the jar and, you know, take them out and let them all just kind of go off my hands, probably going to remove these bracelets, and disperse into the landscape, 
many of these baby spiders will still perish due to, you know, the environment and weather and predation. And many of them will actually do a thing known as ballooning. That's where they make a little strand of silk, almost like a parachute, that will catch the breeze and they'll be carried off a short distance away and that's where they'll build their webs and spend the rest of their life within that very web. So, uh, yeah. The reason I'm using my hands, however, is because one, I hate to admit it, I am sentimental and it'll be quite the experience for me to know that I released them this way. But two, the odds of them biting me, the chance of them even being able to bite me is almost completely non-existent. They're too small to pierce my skin. Black widows are not aggressive. They're going to be extremely disinclined to bite me in the first place. And if I were to get bitten, it might be a dry bite. And number two, it'll just be tremendous amounts of neurotoxic pain being introduced to my body. Um, it's very unlikely that I would ever perish unless, of course, I have anaphylactic shock or respiratory failure due to paralysis or something like that. Although I am putting signs in the driver's seat, I think that the odds are greatly in my favor. And again, these spiders aren't going to bite me and they're not really even capable of doing it because they're too small. Yeah. So it's a good idea to remove these bracelets because I don't want the little spiderlings getting, you know, hiding under my bracelets and stuff where I discover them later on while I'm driving home. That, that would be fun. I forgot to add the most important reason why I'm using my hands to do this, and that's because I can't dump them out of the jar. They've got web all through there. Even if I use a stick, they will tangle up within that silk, and some of them won't be able to untangle themselves. So just putting my hand in there and sort of pulling them out gently is probably the best course of action right now. Please let me assure you, I'm not nearly as reckless as it might seem. Of course, latrotoxin is extremely potent. You know, 10 to 15 times more potent than that of a rattlesnake. But think about that for a moment. Rattlesnakes have these massive venom glands in the back of their head. That's why they have the shape of the head that they do. You know, their fangs are longer than my thumbnail. So when you're injected with rattlesnake venom, that's a large amount of venom entering your system. Black widows, their venom glands are like the size of a pinhead. They're smaller than that. So the amount of venom that you're getting from a black widow bite is far smaller than that of a pinhead. Hundreds, if not thousands of times less venom is being injected into you from a black widow bite than you would be receiving from a rattlesnake. Now, if you took the same amount of venom from a black widow as you get from a rattlesnake bite, you know, just even a full syringe of that or half a syringe of latrotoxin injected in your body, that's a whole different ball game, you know? I would be doing this video from the afterlife most likely. That's why I much fear the bite of a rattlesnake than I do the, a black widow bite because you're getting far less venom. The black widow most likely will not inject you with those, you know, proteins and peptides and all those things that wreak havoc on your system. So, this is actually more calculated than it appears. Don't get me wrong, alpha latrotoxin is a horrible venom to have wrecking havoc upon your nervous system. You know, these are disulfide containing, you know, peptides and proteins that are sending all sorts of signals to your nerve cells, targeting them, trying to destroy them or shut them down or tell them to you know, send signals to your brain that you are in significant, severe pain because you are. Technically, four to eight people, you know, succumb to the venoms of these spiders every year. But the reason for that being is usually those people suffer severe allergic reactions or have compromised immune systems. So far, I haven't experienced anaphylactic shock with anything. Not that that guarantees me of safety and I have a very great immune system. So, you know, it's very unlikely that I'd experience anything any more than extreme pain, cramps, sweating, nausea, headaches, and stuff like that. That is, if I was bit by an adult female black widow and she chose to inject me with her precious venom. That venom is used to secure food. She doesn't want to waste that precious commodity if she doesn't have to.
at this size. Now there's still a ton left in the container. Look at all those. Well, unfortunately, most of the footage of me releasing them is completely out of focus. I'm so sorry about that. Isn't it cool that the babies look so different from the adults? That's actually the case for many species of spiders, especially like the tarantulas and stuff. Their colors can actually be reversed. And uh, it's just pretty cool. You probably noticed I'm in a different location right now. That's because I just released over 100 baby black widows. I didn't want a gust of wind to come and blow them all onto me or anything like that. Um, not that I'm at any risk or threat from baby black widow bites, but still, didn't want that to happen. So thanks a lot for watching this video. Hope you guys found this an interesting video um, and maybe learn some more things about black widows and don't quite fear them as much. Although I'm sure with some of you, your skin's probably crawling right now. Every tiny little thing I feel, I think, might be a black widow. <laughs> um, thanks a lot for watching. I'm Chris Ignato. I'll see you in another video. Or insect Morse code, because these are nocturnal creatures. They spend their time going out and active at night. It doesn't work too good if it's dark out for them to do sign language or to have bright colors. But these are the masters of light, right? They use light to communicate. One, like I just said, to let predators know, don't eat me, I don't taste good. And two, to impress the girls. Because their whole purpose is to spread their genes into the next generation, to make babies. <laughs>